In this video, I'll provide information on how sheet metal bends to include K-factor, bend allowance, neutral axis, common bend terms, and examples. There are links in the description to more information about bending sheet metal. There you'll find theory, project videos, spreadsheets, 3D models, and drawings. Let's start by taking a look at a 90 degree sheet metal bend drawing in some common dimensions you'll want to get familiar with. Here's a sample part. It's a right angle. It's symmetric about the bend. It's 5052 aluminum, 063 inch thick. So what does this drawing tell us? There's some important call outs here which we can explore in a little more detail. MT is your material thickness and in this example is 063. And we've got some terms here. Let's take a look at the setback. The setback is simply your material thickness plus your bend radius. So we can go in here take a little closer look at that and you'll see how that figures. Here's your material thickness plus your bend radius and the bend radius BR is nothing more than the radius of the bend which is formed by your die or your tooling. In my case I've got 16th inch tooling set up in my upper die so that's where this 063 number comes from. Technically 0625, but 063 is fine. So that's your bend radius, and your setback is given by these two numbers, uh, material thickness plus your bend radius. And where that comes into play is relating your outside dimension to your flange distance. And your flange distance is measured from your bend line. And the bend line is that line which separates where the sweep of the bend stops and straight metal begins. So these two are related by the setback. So you take your outside dimension as shown here minus your setback gives you your flange or your flange plus your setback gives you your outside dimension. So that's how those two things relate. So let's take a look at the K factor which is important and we'll zoom in here a bit. So the K factor is how the neutral axis position is established and neutral axis we'll talk about that in a minute but when metal bends the inside here will shrink and the outside here will stretch. So the neutral axis is that virtual plane whereby no metal stretches or shrinks and the length of this arc which is a quarter circle is the amount of material that has to be allowed for in the flat layout to create this bend. So that's what the neutral axis is used for. The position of the neutral axis is usually determined by what's called a K factor and that's given in this formula up here and basically what that is is it's a ratio and it's the inside radius surface to this neutral axis that divided by the material thickness. So if this K factor here is 0.5 that would put the neutral axis right in the center. As that number reduces from 0.5 to let's say 0.4 that neutral axis begins to pull away from the center towards the inside of the bend. This is an empirical uh, this is an empirical situation here, meaning that there's no formula that you can just plug numbers in and come up with a K factor. It has to be determined by actually bending metal and figuring out what it is. There are links in the description to more details. And what I did when I made this part was I used the machinery's handbook. I've got the 23rd uh, revised edition. You'll find tables page 1178, table 2. And you plug in, it's pretty simple, you plug in the bend radius and you plug in the material thickness for a 90 degree bend and you'll come out with 0.138 inches. So that is an empirical value. The Westinghouse Manufacturing, Electric and Manufacturing Company did thousands of bends and they published those tables and you can get this number right out of those tables. Again, there's 
links in the description at least get you to a table for this soft metal. So that's how that was determined. We just looked it up in a table. Using the formulas in my blog threads, you can actually take this number and plug it in and come up with a K factor because the solid or three-dimensional modeling programs usually will want a K factor and you have to know what that is. If you don't get that right, when you unfold these parts and you actually go to make them, they're not going to be accurate. They're going to be off. And you're going to wonder why. So you got to get that, you got to get that correct. So setback, um, again, we talked a little bit about that, but you can see that's just simply the material thickness plus the bend radius, which is given right here. This mold point, you may see it. We won't really use it. It's not all that relevant, but it's simply the intersection of the lines that extend off the planes, the outside of the part, shown like this here. So that's what the mold point is. So let's go down here. I actually made this part, and these are numbers that I know work well and yield a pretty accurate part. So getting back to the bend allowance and why that's important. Looked it up in the table, 0.138 inches. So if we were going to generate a flat layout, what we can do is we can take our flange distance plus our bend allowance plus another flange distance since this part's symmetric and we can get 3.888 inches. So that's the length that this part has to be blanked out at to give us a proper dimension, in other words, a two inch on the outside here. So that's how that works out. So we'll explore this a little bit more in detail a little bit later on in the video, but this drawing here can be downloaded and printed if you want to have it for reference. It's link in the description to that. So these are the things that are important you want to keep in the back of your mind, and we'll take a look at exactly how all this works out and do some actual bending. Here's how a real 90 degree bend is made in a press break. Metal is formed by squeezing it between two forming dots. The animation slows down the bending process and lets us see a cross section of the metal being formed between two dies. In this case, a circular profile and 90 degree bend. The upper die shown here as a cylinder presses the metal into the lower die, causing the metal to yield to the two profiles, leaving a formed bend or shape. The neutral axis is shown in yellow within the cross section of the metal. This virtual plane is where metal will neither shrink or stretch and serves as the basis for calculating the bend allowance. The amount of metal required to sweep the bend. In a 90 degree bend, only one quarter of the neutral axis circle is important. The arc length of this quarter circle becomes the bend allowance. In other words, that amount of metal required to sweep the bend. When this is known, a flat layout can be determined. Let's circle back to K-factor, which was discussed previously. It's important and worth presenting again in the context of our animated bend. The K-factor is a dimensionless ratio that determines where the neutral axis is positioned within the bend cross-section. Let NA be the distance from the inside of the bend to the neutral axis. The K-factor is simply this distance divided by the material thickness, MT. Its nominal value for softer metals is approximately 0.4. There is a link in the description to more details on K-factor and formulas. The goal is to determine the arc length of the neutral axis, which becomes the bend allowance, BA. This length is the required amount of metal to sweep the bend. How do we find this length? First, we know the circumference of a circle C equals 2 times pi times the radius R, or 6.28 times R. A 90 degree bend uses only one quarter of this circumference, so we divide 6.28 by 4 to get 1.57 times R for this quarter circle circumference. Next, we need to determine the radius of the neutral axis. From the animation, the neutral axis is buried under the inside bend surface by a distance of Na. This is given as K times the material thickness, Mt. The radius of the neutral axis is Na plus the bend radius, Br. Combining terms gives the formula for bend allowance, Ba, which requires knowing K. The formula has been solved for K if you know the bend allowance. As mentioned, most 3D modeling programs will use the K factor. Bending sheet metal is interesting and can be done accurately if you understand the theory. 
have good tools and set them up properly. This video presented an overview and explains the basics. K-Factor and Bend Allowance are like the chicken and egg. Bend Allowance is easier to use for flat layouts as it can be gotten from tables and used directly without any calculations. Shown is a table of Bend Allowance values. For a given material class, you simply intersect material thickness with bend radius to get a distance. I've been using 5052 063 inch aluminum and my press brake dies are 16th inch radius. This is where the .138 inch bend allowance value comes from. From my spreadsheets, that works out to a k-factor of .4, which I've used in the 3D models. Theoretical calculations, graphical solutions, 3D modeling, and actual bending all yield consistent results. I hope this video has been helpful.